Welcome to Balanced Life with Debbie Carlin Boyle, conversations connecting to a healthier you, the show that gives you all the latest and greatest health and wellness information to inspire you to live a life of balance and joy. Debbie Carlin Boyle is a health and nutrition coach, personal trainer, and fitness instructor who helps her clients live in balance with everything that feeds us in addition to the food on our plate. Please welcome your host, Debbie Carlin Boyle. Hello, hi everybody, good afternoon or good evening, good morning, wherever you're at in the world and welcome to my show. This is Balanced Life. I am conversations that hopefully connect to a healthier you. I highlight guests and services and products that help you live your best life in the healthiest possible way. Um, I welcome you to my show today, and I want to remind you that I am a health, fitness, and wellness coach and a personal trainer, and I call my company Balanced Life by Debbie, and if you go to balancelifebydebbie.com, you can see all the services that I'm working with people today to help them through these very challenging times. You know, self-care is really, really important that we keep our immune system strong and that we understand that everything is interconnected and that we take care of ourselves. And I'm here to be your accountability coach for whether it's exercise or overall health. I'm here to help you. So check that out if you can. And I also have a YouTube channel, which is Balanced Life by Debbie, Conversations Connecting to a Healthier You. So if you go to YouTube, I have 150 shows actually I've done in the last five years, all different subjects that are in health and wellness, everything from navigating menopause to helping physical, understanding physical fitness in your body and what's good for you. And the latest and greatest craze in uh, um, uh, uh, face care and uh, topical care, things like that, um, foods and all that confusion. Everything's right up there on my YouTube channel and you can watch anything at any time and make a comment myself or my guests will get back to you. We keep the conversation going. That's one thing I like to do. All right, I have a good conversation for you today and I'm really excited about our guests. So sit back, relax, listen, and I take note of some of these techniques because I think it's really gonna help you with many things in your life. So I have a question for you. So at this point in your life, are you looking for a more complete way to achieve your personal and professional dreams? manage stress and change, increase your resilience, confidence, and energy so you can enjoy a more fulfilling life. Well, my guest today, David Hennessy, says that he can help you do just that. 20 years ago, David created a holistic personal development program called The Wonder Technique. It has continued to evolve over the years. David has presented The Wonder Technique at hundreds of workshops and seminars. His formal training is in psychology and nutrition, and he has tra traveled to over 20 countries and lived in three of them long-term. His goal is to give the fundamental tools of personal development to everyone on the planet. So let's hear all about it right now. Will you please welcome my guest, David Hennessy, to the show. Thank you very much, Debbie. <laughs> Hi, Thank David. You. How are you? Thank I'm doing you. very well. Thank you for the honor of being part of your show. And hello to everybody ah, listening. Thank you. thank you for the honor of joining me today. I'm really excited. We came up with a way that we could do the show together because, um, let's see, full disclosure, you live in France. So I you have I'm south of France, yes. You are nine hours ahead of us. Exactly. So, and I'm glad that we were able to do that because you and I talked. Over a month ago, I think, we had a mm -hmm. conversation about trying to get you on. So I'm, yes. I'm really excited that we found the time. I want to start right away, before we get into the wonder technique and everything it's all about and everything you're all about, mm -hmm. I want to hear a little bit about you and your background, 
where you grew up and how you kind of took the road to where you are today. That's a That's twisting a lot. and turning road. <laughs> it is a lot. So um, we'll take the elevator version of it. <laughs> yes, let's take the, the fast route. Uh, I was born in Ireland, in Dublin, although my, my voice doesn't sound very Irish unless I'm in Ireland, which is really interesting when I get there. My no, you have an accent. Changes. I do have an accent. I, okay, I can't even tell. Yeah. And as a teenager, I moved to Canada. That's uh, I, I was the second country for me to live in. And almost 11 years ago now, I moved to France. So I've been living long term in three different countries, one of them with a completely different language, which I, I really learned just through conversation being French, uh, France, uh, learning French. And then the cultures are all different. And that's opened my mind to seeing the world differently because not only having traveled to 20 different countries, but when you move around a lot and you live in places long term, you, you get a deeper appreciation for how people look at things very differently. So especially- I, I, I agree. I think it's a great education. Mm -hmm. You know, I think travel is one of the things that I have, you know, uh, kind of recommended or encouraged my kids to do throughout their lives. And they're both well-traveled at this point. And myself, you know, just because I think it, the things that you learn from people, the things that you see, and if you're really paying attention, the observation is the best source of information you could actually gather in your life. You're right, Debbie, and you learn a lot about yourself and how you interact. Like where I live, I am the only native English speaker in the village. So there's nobody else that speaks English as their mother tongue where I live. I have some friends that I know that speak English, but that's not their native. So I'm really immersed in the French culture and that helps me get outside of myself and see things from a different perspective. And that's what I've always worked on is to try and see the holistic approach to life and how other people interact with things. Which is really cool, I, I think. So what? tell us a little bit about your educational background yes. as you were doing that, all that moving. Okay, <laughs> so. well, originally I was drawn for, I've always been drawn to understanding and comprehending ideas, always been very, very curious. And even though as a, as a young teenager moving into my early adult years, I, my dad was always, he was one of my great mentors before he passed away, was always very much into the psychology of the mind, but I never listened. Uh, you know, we don't listen when we're younger. We just pay, pay very little attention, but I still felt drawn to understanding myself and my interaction in the world and how other people thought. So I ended up going to university originally, actually, believe it or not, most people don't know this. I was going to become a mechanical engineer because I'm very good at working with machines, cars. And when I ended up in university, I, I took a like a psychology class just by chance, and I fell deeply in love with how we work and how we approach things to our mind. So I ended up with, with a degree in psychology from Simon Fraser University, which is a wonderful university in British Columbia, Canada. Hmm. And on the side, I did other studies that are related to nutrition and other different areas that would be considered alternative therapies. But I've always worked since founding the Wonder Technique 20 years ago to what I like to say, crystallize my ideas and make sure that I'm up to date and like take the piece of coal and make it like a diamond, make sure that what I understand is correct and still clear. And what's been really amazing, Debbie, even as recently as today, I was listening to medical doctors talk about the topic of Alzheimer's and the brain development. Mm -hmm things that I learned about 20 years ago that are still valid nowadays. They, those are the things that I like people to understand, things that really are core principles, because some things kind of go and come with trends and changes mm -hmm. and discoveries, but there's some things that are so consistent. I have to agree with that. So you had a road that helped you to discover something that you um, coined the wonder technique. Yes. What was that? Talk a little bit about that background and how yes. you got to discover that. Yes, actually the pivotal point was in the mid nineties when my mom actually was diagnosed with cancer and I was working in sales. And even though things were going well, I just didn't feel like I was in the right space. And I, I always, you know, had this interest, this unending curiosity about helping people. And I decided to take a year off work. I basically just stopped. Some people might've called it 
like burned out, but I just stopped and spent the time with my mom when she was going to her medical appointments. I wasn't the only person involved, but I really helped her simplify her understanding of what she needed to do with all the different protocols that the doctors, be them naturopaths, be them surgeons, be them, you know, traditional doctors. It's hard when you're going through an illness to figure out what should you do. And my capacity had always been since I was younger, which I really identify now, how to simplify complicated things. So after um, spending that time and gratefully my mom recovering from a lot of stuff that she went through, she actually went through two bouts of cancer, two different types in a couple of years. I, wow. I wanted to share with people what I had learned and I was kind of a little bit motivated because I'm pretty sure my mom had told some people, David seems to have a good understanding of stuff. You could listen to him. So I started doing in-person workshops and I started writing down ideas that I had. And I started looking, uh, Debbie, how to pull things together, how all the different areas of our lives, they're not separate things, but they all impact each other. The importance of sleep, hydration, exercise, food, you know, how all of those things really touch each other and that doing one action for our, our mental and physical well-being is really not sufficient. And I know with yourself, you you have a balanced life. You're talking mm -hmm. about things where you pull things together. And that's really, really important. Your work is very valuable for people to understand that it's not just even if sleep is really important, I'm a huge believer in sleep and I understand it well, but it's not sufficient. There's a lot of things we need to do in our lives mm -hmm. that make us healthier and make us happier. I have to agree. It is the uh, backbone of my business as a health and wellness coach. Yes. Everything is interconnected. Some things being a little bit more, you know, the food we put in our body has a lot to do with how sure. our sleep is going to be, but they're all interconnected sure. to a point where it's a snowball effect, right? And it can exactly. lead to you being healthy or it can lead to disease and problems and you, you know, having foggy brain not feeling good, feeling lethargic, those kinds of things are because all of the pieces you were just talking about are not connected. They're disconnected. Exactly. And I think it's so important. And you realized that and, and came up with the wonder technique to help simplify sort of the, explain, you kind of simplify I will. I will explain. each one of the aspects to exactly. be able to to make them all work together, right? Exactly, Debbie. And what you mentioned there, I, I love your phrase, the snowball effect. And some people will talk about the compounding effect. And it's the whole idea when you, you start one idea and you build on it over time. Now, what people need to be very aware of is as you build over time, you can be building positively or negatively. You know, you're, you're compounding good stuff or you're not, you're compounding stuff that's not good for you. So habits start to roll the wrong way. So you have to take a position. And my goal with people is to help them look at the simplest things. Like, you know, I mean, I get into discussions with nutritionists who will sometimes say, you know, water, it's not that important as long as you drink orange juice and tea and coffee. I will disagree because... We Ouch. really need to <laughs> hydrate our bodies. But you know what? There's yeah. people that um, are very specific in an industry and they believe that. And I know it will, it can be annoying to them, but I remember I've been some seminars where I remember one lady, Mary, she came to an event and I recognized her and we started talking beforehand. And she said, David, I came the last time and you changed my life. And I said, how did I change your life? And she said, I'm a nurse, but I never knew drinking water was important for me. But after you talked about why our bodies need water, I just got rid of headaches that I've had for years. Now, dehydration, dehydration is, is the number, yeah. Dehydration is the number one catalyst for disease in our exactly. world. Exactly. In our yeah. world. Hydration is so important. Yeah. When and I talk to people, sorry. I tell mm -hmm. them, if you don't do anything else, just add one extra glass of water to your day. One extra eight mm -hmm. ounces each day. Build it up. Mm -hmm. see the difference in how you feel don't you don't have to do anything else just that and see yes. what happens yes and then and you th then they realize once they feel better they want to do all the other things too exactly. sorry i didn't mean to interrupt you i just you did, you have did. a real you... thing about dehydration and, mm -hmm. and staying it's hydrated. really important and something about you know when you're making new habits even though there's a lot of things for people to do debbie like if you say pick one okay let's work on hydration and one of the things that i often have people say to me well 
David, yes, you know, I know I need to drink water, but how do I do it? And I mean, right beside me here, I have a bottle. It's a glass bottle, but I also have a stainless steel bottle. I say, carry the water around with you. Now, people are not moving as much nowadays with what's going on in the world right now. But even at your home office, make sure water is accessible. That avoids you mm -hmm. making an excuse that it's not available. So if you're thirsty when you're doing the show, you can reach down and you can grab some water. And it's better for your voice. It's easier for your body. And it's about sipping water throughout the day. You don't want to drink a whole bunch of water just before you go to sleep or just before a meal. And it's creating that environment. So part of making a good, healthy living habit is about making things easier for you to access. And then also accepting. And you might find that um, there's multiple reasons why you may want to keep your body hydrated. But once you hook onto a motivation for it, then you start to make, as you said, the snowball effect and you roll that. And as you start to see a positive effect in your life, then you decide to add in another habit, perhaps, you know, because Absolutely. myself, I, 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 you know what, I, I played soccer as a, a lot of football as a, as a young person, but I was never into hydration. And I didn't know as a teenager that what I was getting was headaches was because I was never hydrated. It was in my mm -hmm. 20s when I started hiking and I love being in nature. I was wondering what's wrong with me? I thought I had a lot more energy. And that's when I started to study more about hydration. It sounds so obvious nowadays, but 20 years later, still people don't necessarily drink water. They don't. And our bodies are 70% water. So exactly. we got to keep that level high, not food. I mean, food does hydrate us, but nothing like actually good old fashioned drink that water. We're exactly. going to take our first break. We're going to be right back after this message, just one minute, and we're going to continue on this thread on this conversation. Love it. We'll be right Wonderful. back. I want to share with you a product I've been using for the last month, known as the most powerful antioxidant on earth. It's called My Vital C. My Vital C will not only help you feel healthier, but research shows it will aid in a longer life. And in, since using my Vital C, here are the things that I noticed, that I have no more restless sleep. It's so much easier now for me to fall asleep. And as you know, sleep is a great immune system booster. I'm also supporting my immune system with antiviral and antibacterial properties, and not to mention the high levels of antioxidants I'm receiving. So the bottom line here is I simply feel better. And now I'm recommending my Vital C to all my clients, my friends, and my family. To order this life-changing product, go to the link, myvitalc.com forward slash balance life. Make sure you take advantage of the 25% discount on subscription. You can cancel at any time. Use the coupon balance life for an additional $15 off your first order. Go to myvitalc.com forward slash balance life and check out this life changing product right now. We are back. We're back. And my guest today is David Hennessy, and we are talking about a technique that he developed called the Wonder Technique. And David, what I really like continuing on our conversation before the break is the holistic approach that you um, are talking about. Um, can you talk about how using a holistic approach to personal development is so important, you know, kind of where we left off and what For we were sure. saying? For sure, Debbie. For example, some people might decide, and it's very valuable for your peace of mind and your mental well-being to practice meditation. And some people will get frustrated because they find that, you know what, I can't focus my mind. But then I will ask questions when I'm working with people. I'll ask them about, you know, how well are you sleeping? And get them to explore that. Ask them, what are they eating? And get them to explore that. We talked a little bit before the break about hydration. And get them to kind of look at the idea, well, how can you properly meditate, for example, if you're really, really tired? Your mind, you cannot focus even on a candle. You can't sit there and be calm. What about the idea that, for example... If you're trying to meditate and you're not eating the right foods because our brain needs certain support that we may not be giving it. We may be eating foods that are spiking our blood sugar level, messing with the what's going on in our mind. So it becomes more and more difficult for us to take the practice of meditation. Now, then you can look at it the other way and say, OK, I'm I'm really good at meditating, but I have a problem sleeping. And then you look and then you look at, well, how do you enter into your sleep? 
at nighttime. What are you thinking about before you go to sleep? Like I have a protocol that I developed called framing the day where I share with people like a pathway into going to sleep and a pathway waking up in the morning that helps them create a, a gentle approach and a less stressful approach to living their days. But that allows them to go to sleep easier. It's like a, a meditation that runs into their sleep. But for example, we talk a little bit, the holistic approach again, you can see I'm coming back and forth. If you eat yeah. a meal just before you go to sleep at night, our bodies don't function in digestion when you're lying down and sleep is critically important for us to assimilate the nutrition from what we've eaten during the day. It's not the time when you want your body to be going into digestion. And when the body is cleansing, you know, all the stuff and probably a lot of your listeners do too, but it's the whole idea of understanding there's a relationship between actions that we take, you know, nutrition, how well do we sleep? Are we waking up because our body is really dehydrated at nighttime? all these things come together. So I started to look at all, all the things and how they interrelated and the importance of like getting fresh air, going outside, spending time in silence, spending time with friends, spending time just simply listening to good music and not feeling that you, for example, would exercise because I know you're very good at all the exercise. And I remember you started your career. I think it was spinning, right? The spin that you did, right? Is yeah, I started yeah. as a spin teacher yeah. about 26, Six years ago and yeah, you were ahead yeah, of the right. curve and you were ahead of the curve yeah, so. yeah and now i'm well into my 60s and i have never stopped i've been doing it even during the pandemic i'm teaching outdoors so which i'm very very grateful for but mm. even that can burn out your adrenals if you overdo something like that if i was doing that every single day let's yeah. say and that high intensity one hour type situation would shoot my adrenals which in turn would affect my hormones well you know adrenals mm -hmm. are and cortisol mm -hmm. levels and mm -hmm. that will affect my sleep so again sure. everything is interconnected so balance even in my exercise even at an older age is really important so that can't be too big on the totem pole it has to be kind of balanced i have i, I think i mentioned to you on our pre-call that i have something i work with my clients on called the circle of life and yes. what it is it's 12 things not the food on our plate that's different that's a separate deal that comes into it mm -hmm. but it's 12 things that have to be sort of in the center of the wheel so if it's on the outside of the wheel it's you're doing good if you pinpoint the center of the wheel that means something's low in your life so for instance let's just take three of them let's take your social life your exercise and your finances and then keep in mind, there's nine other things and you're going to go around the wheel and you're going to place dots mm -hmm. where they're at high or low in your life. And then you're going to connect the dots. And mm -hmm. right away, I give my clients a visual of the things in their life that are out of balance more mm -hmm. so than others. Mm -hmm. And then we work on those things first, really small, which I want to talk to you about creating new habits, but small actionable steps that in turn will be sustainable and create new habits as opposed to the quick fast you know fix for sure so for if sure. i see their exercises out here but their social life and their finances and their creativity are down low i realize that they're over exercising and they're not really paying attention to their finances which in turn give you that that you know it, that changes your uh it makes you worry, it changes your cortisol levels, sure. it changes everything, the way things metabolize in your body. And before you know it, you're, you've got an illness. So we got to find the balance in that. And that's so important. But I think you have, I, I like the way you talk about um, creating new habits, because you, you talk about it a little differently than most health practitioners or health coaches and um people do can we talk about that a little bit how do sure. you think because you work from um just i think from a gradual reset and yes. i like your method can you talk about how you do that with your yes. your clients yes um the first thing to go just a little bit before when people want to make a habit um i say to them like why ask them why is what's the reason where's the motivation before we get down into making a habit, is it an internal motivation or is it an external motivation? Meaning, is it because someone else is telling you you should do this 
or is it because you believe that you want to do it? You need to have the right motivation to have the right goal and the right goal will then guide you as to what right habit is. So for example, with yourself, because you know, you do spinning, you love that, that's one activity that you enjoy. And you also know, which you've described really importantly, Debbie, about the importance of not the same activity all the time, like separate days, et cetera, is that for people when they choose like, you know what, I need, I need to do some exercise. I will say to them, well, find out which exercise that you really love to do. Okay, not because your friends are doing, but something that you'd love to do. And it might be a state of action. Like for me, I love hiking and the side effect is exercise. Some people might say they love to dance, you know, and that dancing can be their form of exercise. Other people, it might be running. Other, it doesn't matter what it is, but you find something that you really enjoy. So you will leap out of bed and you will regret that you're not doing it. Now to establish that habit. Sometimes, yeah, you, you, it takes trying a bunch of different things mm -hmm. though, right? Until you something hits, this is it. For you know? sure. That's a very good idea to experiment and see what latches on for you. And then also for the movement of our bodies, for our health and well-being, you might have multiple different activities that you do. When you want to form a habit, I, I will go back to your phrase, the snowball, the compounding effect, just, just start simple. Like when I, you know, when I learned to do my first marathon, and that was a big deal for me because I, I came away from having a serious back injury where I couldn't walk, I literally compounded the distance over time. And I, the first day I, I ran, it was just around a mile, like 1.6 or so kilometers. I had to stop because even though I'd hiked for years, my body wasn't used to running. But every time I went out, I ran a little bit further and I had a goal in mind and I had an intention as to why I wanted to do it, but I was just building up over time. And when you want to make a habit, it's also important to, to give yourself the environment that will support the habit. So maybe for example, you want to learn more about a topic and you're, you know, you say, okay, well, I can do that by, I want to re read a book that I believe will help me on the topic. So, Give yourself one time each day where you're going to sit down and you're going to read, make it so it's a space that you feel comfortable and you won't be distracted in and make it a commitment to yourself that you will do it. And if you need accountability, and I know that you're a big fan of accountability, you can mark it down on the calendar, you know, I read for five minutes a day and then you put an X on the calendar. That seems to work really well with people when they're accountable to themselves, or maybe mm -hmm. they need help from a coach like yourself to just tap touch bases in or they send you a message or send me a message say okay i've done this so you can see the impact over time and also not to have i mean i believe in big goals but not to push yourself where you're going to fail because you're asking yourself to do too much so right. five minutes and then you go wow you know what i really enjoyed reading this i can't wait till the next time i can sit down okay then up until 10 minutes whatever the activity is so you're you're building a desire inside of you to do that and it, it, the same as meditation if you want to learn how to quieten your mind don't say you have to sit down for 20 minutes an hour the first time see if you can just sit quiet for a minute Work, give yourself the time to learn something that is a new action yeah, I, I, I love that. I think um, we get so lost in, uh, you know, even though during the pandemic, we've kind of been stuck in place, but we mm -hmm. do get lost in habits that get us rushing from one thing to the other For that, sure. um, you know, and you're, you're doing one thing, but you're thinking about another thing. Oh, I have to go empty the dishwasher, but right now I'm folding the clothes or yes. I'm walking the dog and I yes. have to, and you're always... So, you know, living in the moment, I think, is really important. And meditation really can do that for you. It starts you on the path. I, I tell all of my clients, like you just said, just stop and take two minutes to do nothing. Close your eyes and do nothing. And then I also recommend, it's free, an app called Insight Timer. Mm -hmm. And Insight Timer, can, you can delineate um, the amount of time and the type of meditation you want to do. Let's say it's morning um, greetings or mm -hmm. uh, morning manifestations or it's abundance or gratitude. And you only have five minutes and you put in abundance, five minutes and up will come all the options and you can see they're all reviewed. So you can see how many stars and mm -hmm. then you just put on your headset, slide down, sit up, whatever it is, close your eyes, keep them open and, 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 just take this guided medica meditation. It is really 
contagious. It's, it, mm -hmm. it becomes addicting almost, you know, not in a bad way, but in a good way. Mm -hmm. But you have to do just like with the exercise, it gets easier and easier and you have to step into it little by little. So I always recommend they start small, just like For exercise, sure. you know, otherwise, you know, it, it, it's the burnout and you're, you know, I can't do For that. Sure. That's like trying to lose weight over the weekend or something. It For doesn't sure, work, Debbie. you know, yeah. it's momentary. So I love your approach. It's so, um, not only is it sensible, but I think it, it's very, um, heartwarming. I think there's something about it that, or about, I can see people working with you where they feel really empowered because you're, yeah. you're so calm. There's a calming approach that you have. Which thank I you, love. Debbie. I think, I think thank that's you. great. Thank you for that. And you used the word addiction, but I would call it a positive addiction to something. There's yeah. a, something that's really, you know, you're attracted to the experience. And if somebody needs a big motivation, I just want to put this out there to your listeners, is that if you want to say, well, I want to make a new habit for my health and well-being, but you don't seem to find the motivation, I say, go into the future, five years, 10 years. Let's imagine, for example, say, okay, I'm 20 years, 30 years into the future. I have grandchildren. If I don't take care of my physical well-being right now, I won't be able to bend down, play with them. You know, I may not be in good health. Is this the world that I want to live in? And then reverse engineer to this moment in time and say, no, I'm going to take care of my health now so that I have what I want in the future to exist. I you have can a story to... on that please, one. Please, please, <laughs> please do. Please share. This one is so familiar to me. Okay, so okay. I grew up, I call myself a process kid, right? So mm -hmm. I grew up where my father um, passed away at 47 years old. Everybody around me mm. either had cancer, heart disease, autoimmune diseases, or um, some, some kind of ailment that was knocking out their health, right? They wow. were going down fast. At early ages, I was watching this as a kid growing up and I made a commitment to myself right there and then, around the time my father passed away, I would say, um, or, or when he got really sick, I, I would say my late teens. And by the time I was 20, he was gone. But I remember thinking how important lifestyle choices play into what your future's gonna be. And I thought, not only do I want to set a pattern for myself and for my children going forward for my future family, but I want to get down not only for my grandchildren, but for my great grandchildren, awesome. I'm going to run across that grass, that grassy field and chase them and pick them up over my head. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to start that process now. Now, granted, that was very unique to me, mm -hmm. but that was my mantra. And to this day, and Lo and behold, I'm a grandma now. <laughs> and That's wonderful. Guess what I get to do? I get to, she's, she's too little to run after, but mm. I can hold her up over my head and yeah. I can, you know, get down and squat and walk, you know, how she's putting her little feet on the floor. And I just, none of my grandparents could ever do that with me, let, not even my parents at some point, wow. you know? So I agree with you so wholeheartedly. What we do now is going to affect I always say longevity with quality. That's the yes. main goal that we have. Yes. Longevity yes. with quality. I love that ideology. I love yes. that thought process. Yes. And I want to just, I want to give a, a mention to, there's a Dr. Peter Atia who, he talks about the Centurion Olympics. And he, his idea is that, for example, as we get older, we want to be able to carry our grocery bags up the staircase. We want to be able to lift the, the luggage up and put it in the top at the airplane. We want to be able to bend down, play with the children. We, we can kind of look at the activities that we do on a daily basis now and say, what activity am I doing, mental and physical, uh, kind of more talking about physical right now, that I want that will be valuable to me for the whole span of my life? And you mentioned a great example there, being able to lift your grandchild over the head. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're looking at what, what flexibility, those sort of things, what will enable me to have better quality of life as I, as I get older? And then we can live our lives that way. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I, think, um, I think what's happened is, especially here in the United States, we have something that I didn't coin this phrase, another health um, practitioner did, but it's called fatal conveniences. 
Mm. And basically talking about fast food and things that, you know, are bad for our environment, things that are unhealthy that we put onto our skin, like petroleum jelly. We're putting gasoline on our skin and it's absorbing into our bloodstream. Mm. Those Mm. things, again, like like, like good habits, those things are accumulative that are going to eventually, you know, you kind of think like, how did that come out of left field when you get sick? Well, if you go back and start thinking about those lifestyle fatal conveniences that you've been accumulating into your body and around your environment for all those years, that's chances are you're going to discover how you did get sick. And sure. that's what I try really hard for myself, my family, my clients, my friends mm-hmm. to stay away from. Because those sure. fatal conveniences, they may be fast and easy and cheaper and cheaper. And what's happened is, uh, you know, I can go into this forever, but the pharmaceutical companies, you know, Big Pharma has come along with cures, very fast cures for all kinds of things that are Mm -hmm. actually making us sicker. So Mm -hmm. the holistic approach to taking care of yourself from an early age, but it's never too late, as we all know, Mm -hmm. even from, uh, from starting no matter what age you're at, taking care of yourself can ward off that accumulative effect of For breaking sure. down all the things that are destroying us, you know, and yeah, creating I totally disease. agree. I, I, I want to emphasize the it's never too late thing because uh, some people will say, oh, it's not worth it, but you can change your life every day by the actions that you take. And Hold it there because we're going to talk about that. I want to okay. talk about your approach to that, you know, which is still mm-hmm. on that same line, but we have to take one more break and we'll be Wonderful. right back okay. after this message. Excellent. I have been a wine enthusiast for many decades, but for a while I had to stop drinking wine because of the sleepless nights and the headaches that I would have in the morning even after only one glass. Does this sound Mm. familiar? So for the past five years and since the start of my show, I've been looking for a healthy wine and finally I found the answer I've been looking for, dry farm wines. Dry farm wines are lab tested for purity, just 12.5% alcohol or less. 0.15 0.15 grams of sugar or less per glass, very low sulfites, and free of toxic additives. Dry farm wines are dry farmed with healthy, biodiverse soil, and the taste, bright and vibrant, due to no manipulation. I can't say enough about the amazing wines that I've tried, and now you too can drink wine and not worry about how it is negatively affecting your health. Just go to dryfarmwines.com forward slash balanced life by Debbie so you too can taste the love put into every bottle. We're back again. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. I'm here with my guest, David Hennessy, and we're talking about the wonder technique and we're talking how it breaks down in his practice. David, can we talk a little bit about focus and concentration and how that's important to everything that we've been talking about so far? How does that apply and how do we create focus and concentration? So we're not off in la-la land. You know, looking at our phone doesn't help, you know, when Mm -hmm. someone's talking to us or when we're Mm -hmm. studying something, but how how do we bring it to the present? How do we stay in the here and now and stay focused? So... Great, great question, Debbie. And really, to to help us focus and concentrate, once again, I go, what are we trying to focus and concentrate on? Once we're focusing and concentrating on something that's important to us, we're more likely to be able to focus and concentrate. Mm -hmm. That's the first step. And you might say, well, you know what? I'm doing a task that's not really that interesting to me. And then you can fill in the blank, whatever it is. Could be cleaning windows, could be vacuuming, doesn't matter what it is. But you want to be in that experience and you're probably going to do a better job of that experience. But when we want to focus and concentrate, often the habit that people have is they're trying to do too much at once. Mm -hmm. And we've heard this so many times before about, you know, multitasking used to be great. And now we hear that multitasking is not so good. We're not as efficient. And what I do is kind of, I, I say to people, the one thing that I need to do to focus and concentrate better is to in the, look at it mathematically, take the minus sign. What can I eliminate from my environment to help me concentrate? So there's, a, I've seen there's a running, running meme and one of my friends shared it with me, which says like, my brain is like, there's 27 tabs open. 
at the same time and there's a music coming and I don't know where it's coming from. It's like you've got too much on the go. And to share about that, I'll talk a little bit in a moment about silence. But when you're preparing for an activity, like right now, I'm with you in this experience of the podcast. Nothing else is on my mind. I'm I'm in this experience as this moment, and I'm very grateful for that. So I'm not thinking about anything else. My whole environment is geared towards this experience. Now, to help you focus and concentrate on going to sleep, working on a task, you create a routine and an environment that's around you. So, for example, myself here, I've had the honor of being on other shows and that. I have a certain environment that I sit in. There's a certain setup. So... It reminds me, for example, when I used to train in martial arts, when you put on the outfit and you step onto the mats, you're in that experience. So you, you condition yourself to when you're going to sleep at night, okay, I turn down the lights, I put away my phone, I, you know, I take out a book to read, I, maybe I have a, a warm bath. You're creating the environment, a routine that reminds your body you're going to sleep. So, when you want to, yes, I was going to talk about focus on concentration, but go ahead. You have a question. No, that, it's about focus. And, uh, so mm-hmm. for instance, just a, for instance, so I'm writing a book, right? Yes. And uh, uh, I get frustrated because I'm not, I can say things better than I can get them down on paper. Let's put okay. it that way. So how do I stay focused and concentrated to keep coming back to getting these chapters done, getting everything that I want, you know, uh, you know, I know something like doing taxes or uh, balancing your checkbook or whatever, you know, trying to get your finances in order. We always find excuses. There's always that procrastination thing mm-hmm. because it's a difficult task. Mm-hmm. So how do we get focused on something that we know is necessary, but is difficult for us? Okay, let's look at the example of your writing the book. You have a big motivation. I'm sure you wouldn't have started the experience if you didn't want to complete it. Now, for organizing yourself and focusing on what your your approach, for example, I'm going to ask you, do you know how, how many chapters you will have in the book? Do you know what you want to discover? Do you have certain points that you want to make? Yeah, I have an outline, yes. Okay, and so it, it basically, it's a lot of what we're talking about. It's the simplest ways to mm-hmm. be healthy. It's called okay. age young. It's about aging Wonderful. young. Wonderful. Yeah. So. so what you can do if you're finding yourself that you're having a little bit of a, um, I don't like to use the word mental block, but some people would describe it that way, is that you may find for yourself, and this is really important for focusing on concentration, there's a certain time of day when you enjoy more to write. Your energy level will be different. Because we do have something, we have cycles. We have all kinds of cycles in our lives when it comes to where our energy level is at. So you might find for yourself, Debbie, there's an optimum time of day when you're more creative and you explore more. So you can, you want to make a note of that with, with yourself when you sit down to write and say, okay, wow, at this time of day, this works really well for me. Now we talked about, we haven't talked much about sleep, but Different people have different chronotypes. They've got different times of day. Some people are, you know, night owls. Some people are morning larks. So you might find you have a certain way that makes you more effective when it comes to write. The second thing is I would share to you is once you've isolated that time to a little bit of experimentation is just give yourself a short period of time where you're like, I can write for 15 minutes and that's all I will do. But I will stay on that habit for that until you have the desire to write longer. It's again, starting small and building up. But also we have to pay attention that usually most people can't keep focused for more than 50 minutes. Like you need to pause. There is a cycle in our energy level Mm -hmm. and you can get frustrated even though you're very passionate about something by pushing yourself beyond the level where you, you need to pause and get some fresh air, reflect on what you're doing. Because I like to share with people that music would never be something we would enjoy if there wasn't space between the notes because the silence allows us to hear the music and our lives require oh, us. Yeah, our lives require that so you can you can write for a little bit if you have a day dedicated to writing to sit down all day and try and write would probably be almost an inhuman experience and you'd be forcing yourself mm-hmm. so you would say okay i'm going to write for 40 minutes and then i'm going to go for a walk in the fresh air and maybe i will think about what i'm writing or maybe I won't, but that's okay. And then when I go back to my environment, as we talked a little bit about the routine, where I like to sit, and you've designed it where some people will want to listen to music, some people will know they enjoy total silence to write. So you create an atmosphere that works for yourself, 
And you repeat that and it becomes a routine. So it's almost like when you're going to that desk and your favorite pen and paper or where do you write with a computer? It's like, okay, it's time to write and let the juices pour. Does I that like that. Oh, it's okay. very helpful. I have to okay. thank you for that. But I had it when you were talking about that, all of a sudden it dawned on me that there are things, there are tasks that we sort of, I mean, I don't have to write the book. I want to write the book. I, yes. I, I love the premise of the book. It's my story to help others and all my education. Be the reason, you know, like you, why mm -hmm. you get into what you do because of a personal experience that you know works and yes. that you want to help out get all that information out. But yet I find it a daunting task and mm -hmm. not easy to, I think I do have a little bit of focus and concentration um, I multitask. I did that yes. as a mom. I did many things as a, um, as a, a, a young adult all the way through to today. I multitask lots of different things with my career and my family. And I uh, do a lot time slots for that. Mm -hmm. But I'm always thinking what I was saying earlier about the next one. And I know a lot of people, a lot of women, especially in my practice, mm -hmm. have that issue. So um, that was very helpful. Thank you. A lot of time and, t and working small will yeah. help me because I always think, oh, I got to get find two hours today. If I just find 15 minutes, it's doable. So for sure, for sure. And you sense. know, it's, when you talk about moms and even gr grandmothers and that when the time that you have with the children is precious and you want to really be there. And in the experience at that moment in time, five minutes of real play with your children on the ground is so much more than an hour of just being where the children are when they're playing. You're actually involved. And those are the experiences that you will have. It's like when you sit there with someone who's important to you and you just listen to them for five mm -hmm. minutes as against being, you know, they're around for an hour, but you're in the experience with them. So really quality, exactly. quality over quantity, exactly. so important in so many health ways in life. Oh, so let's sure. talk about what do you want the audience to know about the wonder technique and what you do, because we're down to our last few minutes mm -hmm. and I want to be able to um, have the audience be able to get in touch with you, hear about what you have upcoming. You're not really in doing one-on-one -on -one anymore. Are you still, or you are? I or? am available to do that, but I did for, you know what, because people came to me when I was doing speaking engagements prior to what's going on in the world right now. So we don't get to travel so much. I created an online program personal development program. And there's currently 10 courses in that, that people can access through my website, anytime that they want any place in the world. And there's 10 different courses, there's video, audio, and there's a workbook. And they Will pay... you say your website for our listeners? Yes, and yes. And we'll repeat it again at the sure. end. Sure. So. It's thewondertechnique.com, uh, T-H-E-W-O-N-D-E-R-T-E-C-H-N-I-Q-U-E.com. Easy to find. And when you go to my website, there's access to everything about me, whether it's the videos that I have, whether it's the blog, but like the course I mentioned there. And when they become a membership for the course, they have access to all the tools. So they can take a course on, how to improve your focus and concentration, how to sleep well and wake up energized, how to become more resilient. There's even one in there about being street smart and, and how to manage your mind in times of stress. So each one of those courses um, is very much to the point. There's not much fluff. There's lots of information for the people to access. So I, I created that actually last year because to make my work more accessible. I am available for one-on-one -on -one coaching, but I also try to make it my work is as accessible as possible. And if people, you know, as a gift to your audience that are listening, I'll just mention, Debbie, if they go to my website or if maybe you leave a link on the, the show notes, I have a bunch of gifts that people get automatically, gifts I used to sell. I've just decided to give them away. There's mini motivational cards. There's a workbook on 10 steps to become healthier and happier. This better sleeping checklist, one page that could change someone's life about different things they can do to help them sleep better from the importance of the environment that they're, they're going to sleep in, being dark, et cetera. Wow, so, that's, that's great. And it, those are workbooks or books that you okay, there's uh, These are all uh, electronic, to, you know, my habit of not making uh, too much paper, uh, mm -hmm. printing paper, because people can print it off. These are, there's a uh, couple of workbooks. One is the um, the 10 Steps to Health and Happiness. There's a book on quotations. The mini motivational cards, people can print them off. I have a little sample here. You know what, I call it um, 
positive uh let me see if you can see oh, there they are yeah yeah oh, have i call it well, i do okay positive, oh, you, you, have, you have products on your website with t-shirts yes. and mugs that say yes i do yeah exactly that's cool. that's a cool. little different way of people yeah. you know putting in front of them and and the motivational stuff is yeah. there in the in the positive sense but okay so yeah that. so final words well, mm. i want you to leave us with some final thoughts words words of wisdom things that you want you know to kind of wrap it all up right now i want to capture the idea that you mentioned before and you mentioned a lot is the snowball effect the compounding effect of the actions we take every day because when you're moving in the direction you want to over time you can make remarkable changes and just being willing to be gentle with yourself as you make those steps in a new direction choose one habit one thing that you want to work on and build on it over time and when you feel you've mastered that add another habit beautiful thank you david thank you so My honor. much gosh i really appreciate your time say your website one more time the wondertechnique.com there it is that's how you can reach him for those of you that are listening to us and those that are watching us it's right there on the screen under david's name so i want to thank you so much for your time and your expertise you are helping a lot of people which is really important and i want to thank you my audience for joining us today i hope this was a conversation that connected to a healthier you and just keep going out and finding those conversations that does connect you to them. All right, we're going to see you in two weeks. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for joining us. I'll see you in two weeks. Bye, everybody. Thank you, David. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Bye-bye.